to last year's winner of this race, Matt Kenson. In the wall, Scott. Todd Bodine. Caution turn two. Out. Caution is out. One of the things that you do here, and Larry will tell you, to make the car turn, you'll start letting that air pressure down in that right front tire. Uh, the more la air you let out of it, the better the car will turn, but it also can damage the tire. Well, that was a break for Kevin Harvick because Kevin Harvick in that 29 car, he was about to go a lap down. Second caution of the day. The first one was the competition caution of lap 45 due to the lack of practice. And this is the second yellow for Todd Bodine, who has hit the wall coming out of turn two. And now makes it all the way around onto pit road with a lot of damage to the right front. Trust me, we ran 32 laps. Pit road will be very busy. Everybody will be in for four tires and adjustments. That's right. Crew chiefs are hauling. Close it up. These guys back here close it up and pit next time by. Bodine with a flat tire. Looks like a busted upper A-frame and who knows what else. Lots of damage to the right front. And you talked about the troubles for Jeff Gordon earlier on pit road. He's going to have to go around Todd Bodine to get in his pit, so his pit road dilemma continues. Yeah, NASCAR official just warned the 54 crowd that uh, there are going to be other cars coming down pit road. Probably wishes he could get out of there before they do. And the only car be left on the racetrack right now will be the pace car. Steve Burns. Mike, they'll go down half a round on that track bar for Sterling Marlin when he gets the pits. He's got a nice shot in here. Open pit stall in front of him. Mike Atwell and Nate Kennan on the tires. Tim Shore and Trent Davis, the tire carrier. Four tires for Sterling Marlin to Jeannie Zelasco. And Jeff Gordon has been complaining. This car is pushing real bad going in. We needed an adjustment going down on the tire pressure on the right rear. And four tires with fuel. Matt? Mark Martin already in the car has gone a little bit to the loose side, but Mark doesn't want to adjust too much. He's afraid he's going to over adjust it, Dick. Rusty Wallace came in with the lead. They're going to fire four tires at it. No changes. That car is virtually perfect. Right in front of him, Ricky. Oh, and the number six, Mark Martin, has beaten Wallace off pit road. Craven has asked for more bite, and he's going to take off in the middle of the pack. Bobby Labonte, an 18 car. He's going to jump from six to third, so that crew getting the job done as well. You don't often see Rusty's crew beat no, off pit road. You know, I think at Wilbur, uh, Billy Wilmer, his crew chief's actually changed the right front tire today, or front tires today, because they're looking for somebody to, to do that job. Todd Bodine has gone to the garage, and repairs continue on Junior's car. See, Dale Earnhardt Jr., an eight car. Trust me, if they're thinking about changing that brake rotor, you're still going to lose a lot of laps, but now would be the time to do it, not while we're green flag racing. Well, I'm sure right now they're just trying to analyze the problem, looking down in there, seeing if they can see anything, see what they need to do. There goes Mark. He beat Rusty by a lot. Oh, yeah. A clear winner on the race off pit road. 89 laps complete. And one of the toughest tracks to tame in NASCAR. We're racing at the Rockets, the Subway 400. Well, yeah, it's probably a good word, but the good word from car 54, Todd Bodine, is, quote, the car is running great. We've heard all day from different drivers complaining about one thing or another, not with Todd Bodine. To Matt. Steve, sorry. Steve. Well, Dick, Tony Stewart just radioed in to Greg Zipadelli, the crew chief. And Four tires for Todd Bodine. They're going to go down on the air pressure a little bit to make the adjustment. Brian Bass and Tony Tolley are the tire changers. Let's go to Matt. Wrapped itself around the Tr rear end down, housing tr of the 42. Two guys, turn two. Big. We have trouble on the racetrack. Rusty, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon in the 24 Jeff Gordon. car. Bunch of cars, more Mike cars. Skinner. Mike Skinner they can't, Nobody can see. There's so much smoke, they can't see where to go. Now, Ryan Newman in the 12th, he will get this lap back, so he'll be back on the lead lap with a lot of the lead lap cars over there crashed. Oh, they're all wadded up over there. There's cars everywhere. Mostly Mike Skinner, Rusty Wallace, and Jeff day, Gordon. Larry talk. Foyt is also involved. That was Jeff and Gordon. Is that Kurt Busch down against the apron in turn two? It is. That was Jeff Gordon's radio. He was telling his crew, look, it just wasn't our day. It just wasn't meant to be. I had him in the pool. I had the 97. <laughs> Matt? And, and Mike, right before Jeff Gordon said it just wasn't our day, he said, I'm going to take it back to the garage, boys. It looks pretty bad. Yeah, I think all of them are headed for the garage. Uh, the four cars involved. Jeff Gordon, Kurt Busch, Mike Skinner, and Larry Foyt. Skinner's car might make it back to the garage. Kurt Busch is going to make it around, but he's got a lot of damage, and Skinner's car is just wadded up. Well, Busch is going to stay out. They're going to try to fix it for the Las Vegas driver. And I think Rusty took the, he got the blunt of that. Uh, he went hard in that outside retaining wall. 
He's out of the car. You can see him standing there. He's okay. There goes Kurt to the garage. So five cars involved. Let's have a look here in turn two. I think that yellow car on the inside yep. gets in. Yeah, it gets up into Rusty. That's Skinner. Mike Skinner. In the Skinner. Floor. And here comes the Gordon. He's in the smoke. He had no idea where anybody is. And he gets into the, the, the Skinner's car. You know, Daryl, that's right there in turn two. We've seen that a lot. That's what happened with Dale Jarrett and Steve Park. It's like the car in the bottom just can't stick there and gets into the car up above him. Larry, the, when you enter turn one here, you can just really stay in the throttle and carry a lot of speed down into that corner. But right in the center, when the car needs to rotate, if it doesn't cut for you, it slides up a little bit. Here comes Gordo. He can't see. It. There's so much smoke right there. You can't even see his car. He has no idea, no idea where anybody is. We couldn't see it, so you know he couldn't see out of that smoke. And you know his sponsor, Ron, uh, spotter Ron Thiel, couldn't see it either. Let's ride with Robbie Gordon. When you make it, you say, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> as quick as I, I can. Third gear, I'm out of here. With Phil Elliott. Now watch, he goes into this cloud right here. Just wondering where everybody went. The spotter's probably telling him right now. He almost completely stopped. In fact, he did stop for a second. Well, I mean, that, that's, my spotter's always I can't see, stop, stop now. And the only thing that could happen there is somebody hit you in the back possibly. But you got to take your chances. More probably than possibly. But Elliot snuck through there. We'll get a damage report when we come back. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Mike Skinner gets into Rusty Wallace and touches off a multiple car crash. Heavy damage to Jeff Gordon and Kurt Busch. Todd Bodine, Larry Foyt also involved. Jimmy Spencer. A lot Kurt of these Bush's cars crew. back here, Mike, they got what they got is got run in too. When they couldn't see where they're going, they got run into behind, like we were talking about Bill Elliott. You got to slow down, but they hope you don't get run into somebody by someone. A little left front damage to Todd Bodine as well. Most of the cars in that wreck have gone to the garage. And that was kind of a gutsy move this early in the race. And there it is. He's in trouble. Right. Yeah. He just got into Sterling, and Sterling got into the wall, I believe. Sterling's left front fender is killed as well. This truck. Oh, there, Sterling's in the wall. Turn one. Hard. Bob oh. Labonte's in trouble. 18 Caution cars. Out, 18 Caution cars out. wrecking. How's your car, buddy? 29 You're car right. spun. 74 is in it, and Sprague and Harvick are there. Caution is out. I mean, I think that was a Sprague product from what happened all the way over here on the front stretch. That started off at of turn two. Yeah, yeah, started over there. Got everybody wadded up there behind them, and they just know where to go. Trying to pass the slower car of Brett Bodine. Yep. This track is only so wide. Patience is a virtue, but gosh, Darrell, it's so hard to be patient. I don't think I've ever seen these guys racing as hard as they are right now, early in a race like it, like this here at uh, at this racetrack. Yeah, 48 car is going to have damage, and certainly had probably ruined Sterling's day right there because he got damage on both sides of his car. This was coming in off the front stretch into turn one. Sterling can't turn the car. The left front fender's got the steering locked up. Let's look up toward the top of the frame right over here. Yeah, he's now it's going to unfold right here. Yeah, he, he just the left front tire was rubbing on the fender and it wouldn't turn going in the corner. And there, Bobby Labonte, he, he may he have gets, got tagged from behind, and he gets hit by Ke Kevin Harvick in the 29 as well. I, I don't think I've seen a race start here like this in a long time, where everybody's so impatient. Now, under this caution, everybody's on pit road except for Dale Jarrett in 88 and Jeff Gordon in the 24. Everybody else is on pit road for four tires. Steve Burns. Larry Mack, Dale Leonard Jr. says car has freed up considerably. They'll make a small air pressure adjustment and a wedge adjustment. Four tires for Dale Leonard Jr. Matt Yoakum. And Tommy Baldwin came on the radio to Jimmy Spencer said, all right, we are going to pit this time. As they kick in a little bit of the sheet metal damage to the left rear corner, they're going to make an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Jimmy said his car was good, but he just needed some help up off the corner. It was just too tight. Dick Bergman. Sterling Marlin, winner of this event last year. Car is really torn up, Mike. The right side of the car is well caved in. There's a big hole in the left front fender. They're going to have to remove the radiator. It has a puncture wound in it. Bobby Labonte is about two garage stalls down. Trunk has been ripped off that car. Nose is all pushed in. Boy, there's some beat up stuff awful early in this race. 
Again, this all began as Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Sterling were working in a tight pack there trying to pass other cars. Just maybe just misjudged a little on Jimmy's part, and he moved over into Sterling, got Sterling up in the wall. Sterling goes down here, and he must have a right front tire down, or else that left front is hung up in the fender, and he can't turn the car. He drives right into the wall. You saw Robbie Gordon shoot through there. Let's look from his point of view. Third caution of the day here at Darlington. Now you see why this track is too tough to tame. Behind the wall for more repairs as we go back to green. We got trouble, trouble already. Three. Casey Mears, John Andretti, Todd Bodine. On Casey the restart. Mears hits Todd Bodine again down on the apron and the 54 car caution is back out. All they did was wave the green flag. John Andretti in the 43 there, he had been to pit road for some service. And you want to know why you look in their record books over the last few years here, why you see two names, Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace, look where they are. Out in front of all this. Way out there. Well, Darrell, it's, I've heard you say it many times, cautions breed caution. And they do, and see what happens is you run a few laps here and you're better than the guy in front of you. So you get an opportunity on a restart, for instance. I'm going to get him now because he's holding me up and things don't always work out. Plus, the other thing I didn't see those guys do, clean their tires up. Ah. A lot of debris, you spin the tires. Guy in front of you spins the tires, you got a good run on him, you bam into him. All these shots right here, pretty normal looking shots for Bristol. Now the field is all single file and accordioned up here. As they come down to turn three. Oh boy, that started when Todd Bodine got in the back of was that Kyle Petty ahead of him. Yeah, it was Kyle Petty in the 45. And it's just a big accordion. You squeeze it, and this is what happens. Yeah. And, and somebody goes and somebody doesn't. And when no the guy doesn't go, he gets run over from behind. Matt. A mental era. But yesterday we saw a mechanical problem that caused the big one. Right, Johnny Sauter running fourth, cut down a tire, treble, turn one, hard, a car in the wall, and spinning down to the bottom. It's gonna be 10 or more cars involved. Johnny Benson. Lap four. Here they come to the flag, and everybody pretty much out of the throttle. Mayhem in turn one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. Want to check? He may have been involved in that. There he is, right there. I think he made it. He was so far in the back, Larry. I think he made it through okay. A little bit of damage to his left front. There you see Ryan Newman in the 12 car. Casey Mears, the nose of his Dodge torn up as well. And Hermie Sadler has crashed out of this race. No dreams today for Hermie. This was his very first restrictor plate race start, Hermie. Jeff Burton on the right, Casey Mears on the left. Darrell, there was contact and one car shot up. Hard hit to the outside wall. Flames erupted and everybody piled in. Well, let's see if we can some kind of idea about what happens here. Darrell, I believe the 12 car, Ryan Newman, looks like he was out of shape, maybe starting to get loose by himself. And Newman almost flipped over. Remember, he had that hard crash at Daytona where he got on his roof at uh, back just, in February. I can't imagine that uh, there wasn't some some sort of contact that started that because that looked so violent. Man, that car was almost over its on its top right there. It hit that wall a ton. Rusty Wallace, his teammate, the two cars involved. As they come through. Watch for the last two cars, which I believe uh, there's Earnhardt Jr. up high getting through with Schrader and Tony Raines. Jr. and Raines are the last two to get through from Rusty Wallace. That was Ryan Newman's tire right there bouncing over the fence. There's Dale Jr. right there. Look at him. I think he got just a little bit of damage on that left front. Let's ride with Dale Jr. Yeah, right there he got in the back of the 30 car. Can't see a thing, look at that. And this is the camera, but remember, he's seeing the same thing out that windshield. Except his windshield doesn't clear like this one. 
Schrader got into the side of him a little bit and he got a little damage to the front when he got in the back of the 30 car. But otherwise, I think he's going to be all right. I, I'm not so sure that Mark Martin in the, in the 12 car didn't make some contact. Man. Tire went completely over the fence outside the racetrack. Yeah. Did the Jimmy Horton. Matt Yoko. Mike, over the past 45 to 50 seconds, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been talking on the radio, diagnosing the cosmetic damage to the car. He said he got into the back of the 30, which you saw in our video. There is damage to the left front bottom fascia. They've got a piece of aluminum already cut to do some work. He also said he got into the 49 of Ken Schrader. Not sure about the right side or the rear. They're going to change the tires because he flat spotted them by locking them up. As Phil drives, trying to work on that left front corner, they're beating it out. Now he's got the hammer. Not as bad as they thought by listening to him on the radio or watching the video. But remember, aerodynamics so important. But remember back to Daytona two years ago where he lost the whole right front fender. They replaced it, and he was just as fast or faster. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal here. But aerodynamics so important as they are cutting another piece of aluminum here to work on that front corner. Let's have a look from Matt. Matt Kenseth, a lot of damage there. And Mike, the good thing about these guys working on their cars on pit road, the pace car's running 70 miles an hour, but it takes almost three minutes to get around this racetrack. And when you're working on a race car, that don't seem like long, but that's a lot more than anywhere else we go. Tony Stewart with a little damage. Here's Steve. And Mike, Mark Martin assessing the damage to the rear end of the number six Viagra car. Mark, what happened? Uh, the 12 car had a tire go down uh, right rear. And, uh, golly, I tell you, this Viagra team just, <laughs> I tell you, I can't believe it. Uh, we just we just can't get on a roll, you know. We run so good on the racetrack, and, and uh, man, we've just been really up against, uh, uh, we had a lot of good luck, I guess, last year, but, boy, it's sure coming back to on us this year. Mark, there's a lot of damage. Can you get the race car back out there? Yeah, we'll get back out there, but it sure ain't going to be pretty. You know, uh, our, our day is wasted, and um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm disappointed. We we had a reasonable car, and uh, nothing was going on there, and, and uh, there was nothing that anybody could, you know, I was just in the right spot to be in a wreck. The 12 car had a, looked like a right rear or a left rear uh, go down, and he crossed up, and there was no way to do anything. You know, there was no way to avoid it. Thanks, Mark. 26 cars in all, Ricky Rudd's among them, involved in this accident in turn one. Let's ride with Ricky Rudd. Kurt Busch is the only one that was not involved in that wreck. And remember, that's at 190 miles an hour. Hermie Sadler, Day ends early. Six laps complete in the Aaron's 499. There's Sprague way on the bottom, and things stack up. Well, there were three wide in front of him. He had to check up for Casey Mears. Hey, the 40 car got him again. <laughs> That's the guy that got him the first time over in the Las Vegas. They just restarted a crash in the middle of the pack, and it takes out the leader, Todd Bodine. We promised you a night of fireworks. This was not what we had in mind. I never, I never thought this race would start off this way. Saw Jeff Green in the one car, the Pinsel car. He was involved. Jeremy Mayfield in the 19. Todd Bodine. I, I believe he had the car to beat here tonight, yep. Daryl, in this Winston Open, and, uh, but it won't happen now. We have not yet completed a lap under Green. No, our pole sitter, Steve Park, got black flagged. Todd Bodine moves into the pole position. He starts the race, and he gets wrecked. Uh, Jeff Green was not sure he was involved. He was sure right in the middle of it. Yes, yeah, he was, yeah, he was right involved. Side. I think he got spun around, or at least he got down on the apron. 
You know, Jeff Green and Jeremy Mayfield got together in the middle of one and two. Todd Bodine, his wreck was at about the middle of the back stretch. Yeah, it was, it was way away from the contact which happened behind him. All right, let's see how, watch the one car. Now this is, seemed to center around him. Yeah, well, this all goes down into turn one. Everything's fine to here, but I think the one car gets into... He got below yeah, the apron and yeah. shot up the racetrack. Got into Brett Bodine first. I, and then I don't, I'm not sure what happened to our leader. This Because it was way in front of this. Yeah, I mean, this is back in the second or third spot. Now, if you notice, the restarts out of the box rules, the, all the restarts are double foul. All right, watch the yellow car inside, third car on the inside. Yeah, he gets into uh, Brett Bodine. He gets turned around, the one car does. Up here in front is where the leader is. Oh, they're all oh, stacked you know up what? in the lead. They were three wide coming off turn. What happened was he got, somebody was on the outside of Todd and got into his right rear and turned him into the outside wall, I think is what happened. Now there's Robbie Gordon and Mayfield involved. And then everybody's headed down the back stretch up ahead. It's paying off for Todd Bodine and Tony Stewart right now. Ten laps to go in the Sirius 400 at Michigan International Speedway. And the 15 car is having a good day. They're up in the top ten again. Back to clear. Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. They can Oh, oh there he goes. There. Todd Bodine. Oh. Hate that. We have no caution yet. Pieces coming off. Tony Stewart would love to see a debris caution right now, and I think he Yeah, Todd just went up and hit the wall and turned. He, he's going to get it. Caution is out. Caution is out. That's a shame for Todd and that group. Plenty of time to get this race restarted, but... All right, Jack Roush. Cheering on Kurt Busch. He has five cars in this race. Kurt Busch was the only Ford to qualify among the top half dozen. And it's been a tough weekend for the Bodines. These three guys right here, uh, Todd, Michael, and uh, Mark, have really been racing hard. Todd, got you saw the car wiggle just a little bit. He was trying to keep it down under Michael, and when he uh, when he corrected, there was nowhere to go but into the fence. Now he goes down here, and the steering's all locked up. Probably got the right front tire down, and uh, he's still going, still carrying quite a bit of speed. Just see that little bit. Of, he's trying to stay off of Michael, and when he yeah. turns it, it just gets loose with him. He almost had it corrected. Down on the inside again. You come up, come up, come up. You need more room. You don't have it. If Michael had gotten back, you heard Michael's engine. If he'd gotten the back in the gas a couple of tenths slower, he'd be in it. Pace trucks out in front of the field here at Watkins Glen for the sixth time in the race. The gravel trap got another one. Todd Bodine. That would be the hometown driver from nearby Shimon, New York. In the National Guard Ford, turn one. Goes down the corner and looks like he got that wheel hop going. Yep, sure did. And he almost saved it. Just gets the front in the gravel just enough that he was unable to. See how it sinks down yeah. and just sticks there. Duck. Those traps are there for safety. They slow a car down tremendously when it gets off the course and keeps them from impacting the barrier. The problem is if you get hung in one, you are hung in one. Yeah. Like he is hung in one, that one. Todd Bodine and Kenny Wallace. Bodine's car is pitched up in the air. Don't fire. A heavy crash. Wow. wow. Todd Bodine and Kenny Wallace both out of their yeah. cars. Todd had the window net down before the car stopped. The 54 car goes right down next to Kurt Busch. Now, whether or not there's contact or not, there, I don't know. Oh, there's definitely contact. It looks like there is. Yeah. Looks like they just touched. Maybe the rear tires touched. And Todd into the wall. Now, watch Kenny Walsh in the 23 car. We got a good shot of him. 
The wind in that, as they said, is already down. Look, he's coming out already. He's, he's, out, he's the out. The car's still moving. He's getting out of there. Yeah, well, that thing's hot. Getting away from there. Now, Todd Bodine is out of his car. That's a camera shot there. Yeah, that's a camera shot. I just saw the replay, so I know exactly what happened. Uh, I turned down under Kenny. Uh, kind of pinched Kurt down a little bit. I didn't think we were that low on the track, but when I did, his car got loose, got up into mine, got me a little sideways, and I probably would have been all right at that point, but when I had to move up the track to save it, Kenny was outside of me, caught the right rear quarter panel, and turned me right in the wall. Um, you know, I kind of got a little mad at Kurt there, and after seeing the replay, I got to apologize a little bit because it wasn't his fault. Uh, he got a little loose. Uh, that's what happens with these cars. They're so aerodynamic sensitive that uh, when somebody gets you down tight like that, it takes the air off your car. And uh, just one of those racing deals. It's a shame. I guess Todd got three wide in there. I watched the replay in the infield care center and uh, just stunned me, you know. But, uh, hey, I hate it for Stacker, too. But our president said we needed to get some air time, so there it is. Steve Park, Kyle Petty, Todd Bodine got a piece of it, and I believe Christian Fittipaldi did also. Man, oh man. Well, that took six laps. And that'd be the second car of the weekend for Steve Park, who had a practice crash here on uh, Friday, yesterday. Okay, let's see who should be mad here. We see Todd Bodine, the 54 car, and it looks like Jeff Green gets in the back of the 30. Jeff Green, the one, gets in the back of Steve Park, and up the hill he goes. Into the wall, and Kyle Petty. I think Todd is going to get into Kyle here, trying to avoid Steve Park. Yeah. Locked him up, got bumped by Casey Mears. Clunk. So that didn't take long. The first angry drivers of the night have been found here in Bristol. Happens. We're back. We're back with the cautions out. Elliot Sadler, Todd Bodine involved in a tangle off turn four. You know what we were talking about earlier, BP, when you get somebody loose, come on, come on, sometimes come on. you can backfire on you. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what happened to uh, Elliot Sadler in 38 car. For the third race in a row, Elliot Sadler has serious damage to the M&M's car, and we can see as it went and then goes down, he is angry. Sadler and Bodine racing on the lead lap together. And it didn't work out. That is a scene that Elliot's getting tired of repeating. Yeah, no kidding. You're gonna get... mm. The tough part is in every one of these races the last three weeks, they've been in the lead lap group when they've had their problems. Now watch what happened here. You see Elliot Sadler gets up on the 54 car and gets him loose, just like Earnhardt did earlier in the race. Problem is, he just didn't quite clear. As he comes down, it just catches him barely in the right rear, turning that 38 in the wall. From her helicopter. See, there's that big push of air right there. Oh, he just. Oh, and he's just going to catch that wall head on. Oh, and how did Mark Dang. miss him? Mm. Ouch. Oh, let's, go, let's go on board with Mark and just see. Great piece of driving. Matt, it's wheel straight and his foot on the brake for Bill Elliott. No adjustments to the nine car. He was very happy about a tenth faster than Tony Stewart on that last run. <laughs> Dave. For Ryan Newman, no issues on entry. He said, but that very tight off. They're going to make a wedge adjustment on Ryan's car. The wrench is in there now. Bill. Tony Stewart loves this car. Says it's extremely stable. Don't touch the front tires. Just a very, very slight chassis adjustment. Like he's going to lose the race off pit road. Nine car, the man. Here comes Tony, and look at was that Junior just drove across in front of all those cars. Yes. Bill Elliott 
Bruins team gets him out first. Jimmy Johnson is next, so he's got back a lot of those positions. And Gordon barely beats Mikey. Harvick. And McMurray. So under caution for the fourth time in the UAW GM Quality 500, Todd Bodine and Elliot Sadler in a crash off turn four and down the front stretch. One of the many jobs it takes to put on a successful race weekend at any kind of track, people to haul the damaged cars away. And they're working on getting Elliot Sadler's mangled machine off the front stretch. How about the Coca-Cola Racing Family of Drivers update? Bill Elliott off pit road first. He, Tony Stewart, Bobby Labonte in the top three spots. Top tens for Waltrip and Harvick. And now the not so good. Five more on Kurt Busch. We saw that terrific job he did in the spin over turn two. And those other guys are struggling tonight. Yeah. Some days diamonds and some days are stones. So BP, looking at this big old racetrack and all of the 160,000 people here, how many truckloads of paper products do you think goes into putting on a, a party for 160,000 people? How many truckloads of paper products? So oh, I don't know. Not a truck. Now, now think about what kind of paper products you're going to need for 160,000 people. I understand. I don't know what you're talking about, but it's hard to imagine needing much more over a half a truckload. How about three? Three truckloads. Three tractor trailers full of paper products to handle the crowd. Got to have it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if he were looking out the front, he'd have really thought that. He was smiling before the wreck. Yeah. <laughs> We're just past 300 miles. Cleanup continues under caution. Here at Lowe's Motor Speedway, Charlotte. How about Jeff Green's pit crew at work? NBC's coverage of the UAW GM 500 is brought to you by the new Dew, Mountain Dew. The people who brought you Mountain Dew by UPS, the official delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. And by McDonald's. One lap away from the restart, Elliott Sadler's crashed car has now just been removed from the track. The driver is with Marty Snyder. Elliot, we got to quit meeting like this. What happened? Uh, I think your videotape shows it. Um, I was just right behind the 54. It looks like he got loose. And I tried to drive under him, but uh, he just clipped me a little bit. And my own fault of some people, you really can't race real close at this early in the race. And just um, it's my own fault. But I want to apologize to everybody, him and ends and Robert Yates racing. We've been building me safe race cars and fast race cars. That car is very fast tonight. The Morris family was here to watch us run and uh, just for a minute to be. I'm kind of looking for this black cloud to get off our shoulders. and. Uh, so we can make it to the end of the race. So uh, we'll try to get him to Martinsville. See you in Martinsville. Thanks a lot. Elliot Sadler out for a third straight week. Check this out again. Yeah. We stopped it just a moment ago. What? Elliot's going to come back in front. Watch this. Ay, 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 ay. That, was, that was close. You think Man. he closed his eyes? <laughs> Rick Hendrick has cars in the first and third position. We have a spin. Trouble down the front stretch. Dave Blaney. And Todd, and also Todd Bodine. A lot of damage to that 77 car. He's hit that wall hard. And the 54 has gotten both the left front and right front corners. No, we didn't, he didn't help that car. But look at the nose on that 77. Yeah. It may be the smallest track on the circuit, but you're still crashing into something at better than, you know, 75, 80 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. When you take a hit like that. And these walls are just as hard here as they are any place. Else. Yeah. <laughs> There's proof. So this is uh, yellow number 13. And I know you're going to ask me this. We're not even close. Oh, no, I'm not because no. I know that. I know. Check this out. Oh. The radiator is broken in the 31 car. It has to be broken. There's a lot of stuff broken on the front of that car. Man. Going 220 right now. Pits are open. I'm going to come in, OK? Four, come on. All right, let's see if we can uh, dissect all this. See Blaney down on the left side. Robbie. Ah. Oh, boy. Top of the night bounce off the wall when he slowed.
slowed down. Know where to go for Robbie or Dave Plenty for that matter. Mm. Looks like 54. And who was that? They got. I don't know who he made contact with off the corner. So yellow number 13 out. The record for most yellows in a 500 lap Winston Cup race here is 18. It's John Andretti that he made contact with BP. Oh, that's good. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. watching Tabo Dine and another car go through the corner and they were very, very close to each other. And when you run that close together through the corners, the guy in the bottom gets loose. We'll have to see if we can get back to that replay, but we have talked about green racetrack. Yeah. Kenseth gets some damage, Bill. Right on the radio, says, I was in it. May just be sheet metal, but look for him to come down pit road when it's open. They can't see the car yet. Uh, left rear corner folded up under a little bit. It doesn't look like anything major, Bill. Front fenders are intact. I got to look at it as it went down the front stretch. They're talking about it on the radio. Robbie said, I might want to look at it one more time before you come in. Only area of concern might be where they put the fuel into the car. They'll have to take a look at that. See those two cars I was talking about? See how he's on the bottom? Or actually, the car on the bottom got loose and got into Todd Bodine. Yeah, that's Michael Waltrip. Yep. So Michael, Michael, with, when you run this close to the corners like that, you really... The aerodynamics on that car on the bottom of the racetrack isn't there. And now these other guys get just caught up with everybody checking up. Yeah, it looked like Kenny Wallace went up over the top of Bobby Hamilton Jr.'s right rear. Top of the screen, right-hand side. Uh, Michael, Michael was just saving his race car. Got into the back of Todd Bodine. And now in the jam up somewhere in there, Matt Kenseth gets run into from behind. See Hamilton Jr. Yeah. and Kenny Wallace there. This is Mark Martin's view. Oh, talk about thread in the needle. Kenseth, Kenseth's already been hit there. Marty. Alan Michael said on the radio uh, he didn't know what happened. He thought that uh, someone else had gotten into him, so I don't know if his car just got loose or what happened, but he did not say anything about the car being loose. You can see the right front fender damage, same situation as Kurt Busch had. That's going to hurt you here at Atlanta, but if they can fix it and stay on the lead lap, they uh, can overcome this. They uh, did change right side tires here. I believe they will come down pit road next time and change left side tires. Yeah, Marty, when... when you know, Michael was on the bottom, and what happens when you run through the corners like that, that close, the air is taken off the car on the bottom, so it's, it's like the downforce is stolen away from that race car, and it gets awfully loose. See the damage on Matt Kenseth. I'm thinking it's Sterling Marlin that got into the back of him, Bill, because they're fixing up the nose on Marlin's car now, and he was running right behind him at the time. Matt said, I was watching the wreck in front of me. Somebody ran into me from behind. They talked about coming down pit road. Then they talked about having Mark Martin pull up and look at the car. They looked at the pictures on television, decided to bring Kenseth down pit road. So here he comes. Originally, they were going to put four fresh tires on it. Robbie Reiser, very calm as the crew chief, giving instructions. Matt said, leave the tires alone. They only have half a lap on them just bang out make the repairs to the car they go to the left rear first they were worried that this was flared out too far they've got a patch ready to put on it working on it behind the car they also want to see if anything's loose underneath robbie says if there's anything loose we'll fix it and then send you back out so kenseth gave up 20th position there for this pit stop now i want to try and take a look right in this area right here i believe that's around where matt's running I'm sorry, that's where the wreck starts. All right, and now Kenseth is farther back up the track. Right under the red billboard, look around in here. That would be around where Matt is. So the spin's there, everybody's on the brakes. Yeah, they've already gone by. Yeah. He gets, he gets tagged about the middle of the backstretch, or right before the middle of the backstretch. 
So they, they give up, uh, again, their 20th position to make repairs on that car, and we'll follow that story. Bill's on top of it for us and uh, see what the damage assessment is on the championship leader. Kevin Harvick leads under caution here in Atlanta. Dave, Todd Bodine is next, the National Guard Ford. There are 49 cars here. That means six cars will go home. However, there are several cars that have used up their allotment of provisional starts. Uh, the 14, the 43, the 4, and the 49 are not eligible for provisionals. Plus, there are three cars here uh, that are with new teams. They have not yet earned a provisional. Uh, what all that means is there are 42 cars eligible for a provisional, so nobody who uses a provisional will be charged with using one because there's less cars eligible than there are spots in the field. Now, it still means the cars without provisionals would go home if they're not in the top 36. Uh, if for some reason some of the cars uh, who are eligible uh, fall off and we can't fill the field without going to one of those cars who's not eligible. Boy, is this convoluted. <laughs> then the car with the most qualifying attempts, which would be Kenny Schrader, the 49, would get a spot in the field. And if it all comes down to that, we'll have a one-hour special on speed much later this evening to explain it to you. The moral of the story is 43 <laughs> cars will be in this race on Sunday. Thank you. That's exactly. where I was getting there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's right, and folks. Six don't, will be going home. Don't, be, not don't, don't be confused. We'll get it all straightened out, and you'll have a starting line. Of that sounds like some of those driver descriptions about how the car was driving. Yeah. <laughs> Just explain that one more time. The California recall election is simpler, and I, I think it has less candidates than what we have here. I'll be one to bet you you could tell me that same story again and not miss anything. <laughs> Next time we come here. <laughs> of course, by then, the rules may be different. Yeah. All right, here's Todd Bodine. First lap of 52.30. And uh, Elliott's first lap was a 50-90. So Todd Bodine about a second and a half off on that first lap. And what that tells me and what this should tell this race team is they are missing something in the aero package of this car because they use Robert Yates' engines just like Sin Elliott Savage's car. And we mentioned three teams that are here for the first time. One of those is a Yates car. Uh, there are several what we call R&D development teams uh, that are here for this race. Uh, Todd finishes up. 51.6, and that is 1.2 seconds off pole for the National Guard Ford. Elliott Sadler's M&M's Ford is quickest, Bobby Labonte second, and Todd Bodine third of three. Homeless, some good cars, Jason Leffler, Kevin LePage, Steve Park, Kyle Petty, Todd Bodine, and Mike Bliss. That 30 car on the pole for two restrictor plate races this year goes home on the fourth one. Talladega has long been a track of surprises continued today. Our congratulations to Elliot Sadler, the butt pole winner for the EA Sports 500.